Bill Show wish to thank our primary sponsors, The Mallon Agency, located in Springfield, PA, where they take pride in exceeding expectations every time. Anthony DeCecco and our friends at Tennis Addiction are ready to serve all your tennis needs at their beautiful facility in Exton, PA. I love the Olympics. I love the Winter Olympics for one sport and one sport only, the ski jump. That to me, you know where they go off the ramp? I think that is an Olympic practical joke. <laughs> they get one dumb guy from every country and they go, hey, good day, God, come here. Go up those big flight of steps, go through the door, party for you. <laughs> okay. Oh! Welcome everyone to the Rosie and Bill Show. From telling jokes in the family tap room in Philadelphia, to the Fringe Festival in Scotland, to opening for the likes of the Smothers Brothers, B.B. King, and Weird Al Yankovic, our guest this week has been making people laugh for decades. Please welcome to the Rosie and Bill Show, one flat out, fantastically funny Philly F.O.D. Joey Callahan. Joey, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome. Thanks for having me, guys. This is lovely. Yes, we're happy to have, especially a local Philly boy. Philly so guy. I had, I, before before the show, I did my work. I had a Wawa hoagie, and I was <laughs> I had Eye of the Tiger when I came on. So, hey, are you still living in that tap room? No, no. We 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 did the Great Irish Exodus up to the Northeast. That's where I'm in. I'm in the Somerton section of Philadelphia, St. Christopher's Parish. If anybody wants to stalk me, <laughs> but uh, but no, we're here and we're Philly people. So it's fantastic. That's what the Irish and the Italians do. It goes by what parish you belong to. Exactly. Case. The Italians go to South Jersey. The Irish come up to the Northeast. So, Right. Well, before we're going to get back to the tap room in a minute, but I have a question about when you tell people what you do for a living, if they ask you and you say, I'm a comedian, how often do people say, say something funny? Uh, well, first of all, I never, ever tell anyone and, <laughs> and, 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 and because then you have to deal with that shenanigans and and so i'm just kind of unassuming if i the, the, what's worse than say something funny is if you say something funny just off the cuff because by night by nature most comedians can be very funny off the cuff they're like is that in your act was that one of your jokes no it's just something i said funny like then you get to the point where i'm, I'm not talking I'm, I'm 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 not communicating at all but do you have any fun with them? Like if someone says, well, what do you do for a living? And if they've never met you or seen your act, do you make up like really fun things? Well, my, my brother-in-law in New York, my wife is from New York, had a Kentucky Derby party. And it's all these people we didn't know. And everyone I talked to, they would ask me what I did for a living. I never asked anybody what they do for a living. I, I live in a section of Philadelphia with all cops. You don't ask any questions. So, <laughs> so everyone who asked me what I did for a living, I told them something different. So, and then all the people go, oh, did he sells greeting cards. No, no, he told me he was a blacksmith. So <laughs> <laughs> it eventually caught on where my jig was up. Uh, that's fun, though. I mean, you got to have a good time. So let's go back to that that family tap room. Who owned it? How did, you know, when did that all come to be? Like, what part of the city was it in? And how did you come to per start performing there as a seven-year-old? Well, first of all, I'm a Callahan. My mother was an O'Connor. My grandmother was a Gallagher. So I'm literally related to the cast of Riverdance. So, <laughs> so it's Callahan, O'Connor, and Gallagher sounds like a law firm you don't want to hire. It's like Callahan, O'Connor, Gallagher, and Goldberg. The people on the phone going, can we get the fourth guy? Is the fourth guy available? <laughs> so my aunt and uncle, my, my aunt and uncle Tommy and Annie O'Connor uh, owned the Fishtown Tavern in, in the glorious Fishtown. Now, keep in mind, I'm from old fish town. I'm not from the hipster new gentrified. I'm from the take a bat to your head fish town. So it's a completely <laughs> different environment. So my aunt and uncle were wonderful. My, my aunt Annie was the best. And, 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 and I would come home and I would tell jokes and they loved it. And if I could make my uncles laugh, they would give me shots of beer. So keep this in mind. 
I grew up on shots of Schmidt's beer, Ortlieb's, and liverwurst. That was that was my entire development. I was the only eight year old that had open heart surgery. So, <laughs> <laughs> so and, and, you're probably immune to any disease after that. Oh no, it'd be, it'd be good liverwurst. That is the greatest thing in the world. I, I, I even to this day, I'll have a liverwurst sandwich and go. I know this is killing me, but if you're going to go, this is the way to go. And and my uh, and I could make people laugh and and I remember sitting at the at the bar watching the Dick Van Dyke show and I fell in love with Rob Petrie and I wanted to move to New Rochelle and be a comedy writer and I met a girl and my wedding reception was actually in New Rochelle, New York, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. So. So was your family supportive of you, like being? Well, house. I don't know what the Italians are like, but the Irish ain't exactly supportive. <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's why i'm asking yeah so i always said that in my next life i want to come back as either as a jewish firstborn male or an italian firstborn male because they can do no wrong they're like the prince <laughs> the, the irish are like oh no you think don't get so full of yourself but i had some i had uh detractors but i also had supporters my, I, I could make my mom laugh my mother would laugh at me well, there you go. You know, and I have to tell you, as you guys are talking about this, you know, you, you, we got the Italian side, we got the Irish side, and whenever this kind of stuff comes up, I'm I'm Scandinavian. I'm like, where are my people? I think they're all in Minnesota. Uh, That's but right. <laughs> are Are you eight feet tall, like all the Scandinavians in Minnesota that I've met? I'm only six three. Oh, okay. <laughs> you go through a growth spurt. You're young. It'll be, <laughs> face yourself. Drink whole the, milk. I was the runt of the Viking litter. <laughs> <laughs> But overall, though, Joey, one thing I'm curious about is, again, I love just talking about all the different aspects of the city and all that stuff. It's just great. And But I wonder, how would you say growing up in the city of Brotherly Shove, which is now our new nickname, thanks to the Eagles, yeah, helped shape you in the career that you've chosen? I love, love, love this city. When I hear anybody criticize this city, I get very annoyed with them. This city has been fantastic to me. From the, I, I'm a street kid. I grew up on the L's and the subways. And, and, uh, and I love the fact that in Fishtown at the time, it was a very European. I always tell people I grew up in a small town in the middle of a major metropolitan city. We had people from Poland, Germany, uh, the Irish. So it was fantastic. I would not give up. As a matter of fact, no matter if I had a choice to live anywhere, I swear I, I'm being as honest as I possibly can, I'd probably stay here in Philly. You know, it's amazing, Joey, when you think of it, going all the way back to the Broad Street Bullies, mm -hmm. you know, Bernie Perron and so many of those flyers and the Phillies. And he, think about all the athletes that came here literally from around the world and then they stay here. Sure. Yeah, I mean, look, look, look at Kelsey. Um, he, he ain't going anywhere. I mean, he's, he's a prince. He'll, he'll never have to leave. He'll yeah, never he never play a drink either. What's that? <laughs> he could run for mayor and win an election. Absol absolutely, he could. Now, and again, don't get me wrong. The city, we like every major metropolitan city, we have our problems, but we're going to rise above it because this was the birthplace of liberty. Philadelphia is one of the best cities in the world. Oh, I love that. I think they should hire you to do some PR. I, it's sure I'll do that. I just open my big mouth. <laughs> it was the birthplace of Schmidt's beer, too. Uh, you know, that's so funny you say that because when I was a kid, Schmidt's was brewing beer and the wind would cut a certain way. And I was at Holy Name of Jesus grade school and the entire room, the whole entire school smelt like hops. Right? Yeah. So you get used to that. So now flash forward, I go to the Edinburgh F Fringe Festival in Scotland. I'm, the, I'm an American. I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm really, really nervous. I get out of the car and I'm like, oh, did I bite off more than I can choose? But they have a brewery called McEwen's and McEwen's was brewing beer and the wind cut and all of Edinburgh smelt like hops. And it was like sensory memory. And I'm like, nah, I'll be fine. I know what I'm doing. And I had a great month and a half run there, but it all came down to that, that smell of beer that I went, oh, all right, I'm good. I know what I'm doing here. Isn't that something? It's yeah. universal. Yeah, well, it is. Speaking of diversity in your own community, and then you just said you went and did shows in Scotland, do you find that it translates really well in other countries? Do they get the nuance of what you do? Well, it, it, that was really cool, the part of it. I had to change some words. So, for instance, you wouldn't say pants, you would say trousers. I wouldn't say diapers, I would say nappies. That's just minor stuff. But the thing I loved about it, whether it was Canada, England, Scotland, uh, anywhere in Europe, people had come up to me and said, wow, it's like you grew up with me. 
And I kind of got a kick out of that, that there was a universality to that human experience of humor, particularly coming with families. Every family's the same. It, it, it was, it was kind of cool. And I, I was kind of like, I didn't say anything. I just kind of quietly listened to myself. And I said, all right, how many countries are somebody going to come up to me and say, it's like you grew up with me and everyone they did. So it was cool. Mm. It, it's interesting to hear that, Joey, because one of the things I find, uh, you know, really enjoyable about your comedy is its relatability. And, oh, and you, you just talked about it and kind of that takes it to a whole nother level when you're relating to people in other countries or they can relate to you uh, halfway across the world. Well, coming from being of Irish descent, we're great storytellers. And I married an Italian girl from New York. And you could tell that she was an Irish because something happened to her, something at the dentist. I don't know. But the story was she told four people differently. This, they told them the same story, four different people. It was the same story from the first person to the fourth person. If you're Irish, by the fourth story, it's much bigger than what actually the first person you told it to. We never let facts interrupt the good story. We're, we're going to make it better. So but my wife, like, no, this happened and then this happened. Boom, blah, blah, blah. Or I would have had a big gunfight at the end of that. <laughs> well, Are any of your kids com interested in comedy? <laughs> yeah, If their father can get them tickets to see Matt Reif. That's the, uh, that's, that's the one. No, I have two daughters. Um, my eldest is 27 and my, my youngest is 23. So he's home for graduate school for Christmas break. She's, they're both wickedly funny in their own right. And my wife is really, really funny. Um, I'm probably the least funniest in the house. I'm just the one that makes money doing it. So that, that's something we've, we've kind of heard that before, you know, from a, from a few other folks in your business. I think that's, that, that's kind of interesting. And one, the other thing, Joey, I wanted to just bring up because we talked about that relatability in, in other countries and you've opened for some pretty impressive people. In fact, one thing, uh, as of the day we are recording this interview, one of the brothers you opened for passed away. I know, Tommy, Tommy Smothers. Smothers. They, those two guys were the nicest guys in the world. It was somewhere in central Jersey. I was with my, my friend, Rob. And I was in my dressing room, just kind of like speak when you're spoken to, just, you know, don't don't get in trouble. And all of a sudden there's this knock at the door and it was the Smothers Brothers. And they go, hey, we're the Smothers. And they introduce themselves. They go, come into our dressing room. We've got all this food and 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 just come hang out. You shouldn't, don't be by yourself. Uh -huh. So for two hours, I was listening, talking to the Smothers Brothers. They were the, they made, okay, get food, take some home to your wife. They could not have been nicer. And Tommy Smothers introduced me before I went on and he, they, they were just wonderful. I couldn't say enough nice things about them. I love to hear that one. People yeah. who are very successful are just really good people that mm -hmm. they're not full of themselves. They stay humble and grateful and they keep their feet on the ground. Well, I mean, I've never, I, I, I'm trying to think BB King, I opened for, uh, let's go through all the people that I opened for that are dead now. BB King, uh, could not have been a nicer man, just genuinely sweet soul that just wanted to talk to you. He's alive. Weird Al Yankovic was unbelievable. I opened for Foreigner, and the lead singer from Foreigner had an EMT there to give him oxygen when he came off stage. So I, I said to the EMT, I go, what he goes, oh, the lead singer gets oxygen um, when he comes back. I said, well, in my contract, I get a high colonic, so make sure it's chilled when I come back. <laughs> and, the, and the guy looked at me like, do, do I have to give this guy a high colonic? <laughs> I said, or a fleet enema, whatever one you've got, whatever one you want to use, I, I don't care, but that's in my contract. <laughs> and then he introduced me, I go out. So the, for like 30 minutes, I think the guy's thinking, oh, crap, oh, do I have to give this guy an enema? So... Um, <laughs> But yeah, I've had some pretty good experience. A lot of jazz people too, like Boney James and Chris Bodie, good people to open up for. So it's neat. That's I'm curious great. when it when it comes to the musicians or the musical groups, is there a difference, Joey, when you're opening up, let's say, for another a fellow comedian versus opening up for a musical act? Yeah. So you have to remember, um, they're there to see like Tommy James and the Shondells. I just recently opened for him about six months ago. Um, they're there to see tommy james you're the they're not there to see you so i always ask like hey who's here to see tommy james and everybody goes nuts and goes, well who's here to see me and people start to clap and go you're lying you don't even know who i am but i can't remember who the comedian that said it was when you go to a deli and you order a sandwich and you get a pickle you didn't order the pickle but you're really glad the pickle was there 
most opening <laughs> acts have to view themselves as the pickle. That's how I would explain it. That's great. That's a really good philosophy. Not my line. It was another comedian. I can't remember who it was, but that's how he described it. That's how all opening acts should realize they're the pickle. They're the pickle and they're appreciated. And mm -hmm. you really you really have to have a pickle. You you guy. didn't order the pickle, but you were so happy the pickle's there. Definitely. We had the opportunity to check out your dry bar comedy special. Oh, cool. And it was hilarious. Thank you, my darling. Thank you. So how long does it take or did it take you to compile all of that and put that all together? Well, I'm not a dirty comedian, but when you do dry bar comedy uh, out in Utah, they send you a message. They send you a video going, this has to be clean. And it has to be really clean. And I spend a, a good week going through, I can't do that joke, or I got to change this joke. And you and you run through it. You go to clubs and you try to run through it. And it, it, half of it is psychological. It, you're going to psych yourself out. They were such nice people that I did two shows. But the second show, they introduced me as Joey Calhoun. And I just went, uh, I just closed my eyes and went out. And and I'm, I'm on stage and all of a sudden the director comes out and goes, stop, stop, stop. I go, are you guys firing me? And she goes, no, 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 no. I go, well, are you firing the audience? She goes, no, we're not firing. The guy said your name wrong. I said, him you should fire. And they got a big laugh. I went back out and did it again. The audience was rooting for me. They couldn't have been nicer. Wow. That's so funny. Joey Calhoun. <laughs> Joey Calhoun. In Utah, they don't have a lot of Irish people. They've got 12 <laughs> wives, but no Irish people. So, so as you were starting out joey a lot of people that we've talked to in your business have said it takes quite a number of years to really find your voice as a comedian would you agree with that i would say that uh there's hints of your voice from the beginning and you eventually become louder the more stage time you get the more comfortable you become you uh, tend to find a way of being yourself the trick is you go from not being yourself to back to being yourself. So it's kind of cool. And really what it comes down to is making your friends laugh or your family laugh on the couch. You just have to do that same thing, but with strangers in a room with a liquor license. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> yeah, which sometimes that can make it a little easier, sometimes a little harder uh, yeah. to make them laugh. Uh, Joey, one other thing that you do extremely well, and, and I'm going to go back to the dry bar special. Just Will you do my so, eulogy, please? You're very complimentary. Yeah, I, yeah. Pre I appreciate that. In the event I get hit by a bus, say some nice things about me. Would you please? <laughs> that's, that, that's how we roll. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that. You you provided, um, there's two things I just want to focus on from the special. One is kind of a, a, a public service announcement, I think, that that I don't know if you intended it to be, but you know, for men or fathers who maybe live in a house with a wife and daughters, you yeah. offered a great suggestion that can help make their lives easier. I live with all women. I got it down to a science. I just wake up and apologize to the first one I see. <laughs> I'm sorry. What was I thinking? No, you're right. I don't listen. No, you're right. No, we should do it your way next time. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. You know, you're right. I mean... <laughs> Get it out of the way. Thank you. Get it, get it out of the way. Just wake up on the first one. Apologize to the first one you see. Get it out of the way and just go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like my, my, I, I, one time my wife just yelled at me because she's telling me, you got to do this, got to do it. And all of a sudden she stops. She goes, stop playing cartoons in your head. And that's exactly what I was doing. I wasn't <laughs> listening to a word she was saying. It was a bing, 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 bing. It's so like, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so I, I heard up until... We have to do this, and then I stop listening. <laughs> well, there's, there was one other one other aspect, and I don't want to give too much away because I want to encourage all of our viewers to go and watch this special. I promise you'll Please. enjoy it. It's great. Thank you. Um, but when you shared the example of uh, you kind of bump into someone in France and they had a little bit of attitude, but being from Philly – you took care of it and you got yeah. France to do what France usually does. So I'll just leave it at that. But I just thought that was phenomenal. I've been to Europe. I performed in Europe. I love performing in Europe, except for one country. Can you guys guess the country? France. Very astute young man. Exactly. By no fault of my own. First time I was there, I was taking pictures by the Eiffel Tower. This French guy bumps into me, 
looks at me like it's my fault, and then walks away. Fortunately, being from Philadelphia, I got some training on how to handle this little problem. <laughs> I yell real loud, hey you with the attitude. The entire country of France turned around and looked at me. <laughs> and then they surrendered. Oh, thank you. That, that's very kind of you. And uh, you guys are excellent choices of comedian. You've had one of my favorite comedians on as a guest, Henry Cho. I absolutely love that interview. That was a fantastic interview you guys did. You really, you guys really treat comedians very nicely. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for you watching. You like your country it. music, though, too. You do like your country music on this show. <laughs> Being from Philly, I'm very conf I, I opened up for Billy Ray Cyrus one time. And as a joke, he had a set list taped to the, to the stage. And I, and I ripped it up. I go, hey, look, I got Billy Ray set list. Look what song he ends with, which was the achy breaky time. <laughs> so I fold it up and I put it in my pocket and I do my set. And I'm in my dressing room. I get this knock at the door. I open the door. And these two giant rednecks go, y'all got <laughs> Billy Ray set list? I go, what? You got Billy Ray thongs. I go, what are you? Oh, crap. And I reached in and I go, sorry, guys. And they just like took a real, don't do that again. And then they, <laughs> they leave. And I'm like, Oh, I think I may have ruined the show there. Oh, yeah, that's a serious thing. I know. I You could have used that information before I did that. Thank they, you. Singers need their set list. <laughs> yeah, you kind of think you would know what you're talking about before you go on, but such is life. Yes, definitely. How do your wife and daughters feel about being such an integral part of your act? I'll tell you, if, I said to my wife all the time, if you left me, I'd be an MC. <laughs> um like I I, I I i don't know i don't mean to do it but we just everything's about my my wife and my children i can't help it um you know what they're cool with it uh, my uh they're a little my daughters are a little embarrassed with their friends knowing what i do or or my daughter was at temple and a bunch of her friends uh got my comedy special and were watching that before they went out to parties it's a that for my daughter i felt that was a little awkward i i, I could see her not being too cool with that it's not like yeah, a material that, killer right <laughs> yeah so and you know joey it's, it's funny you mentioned a couple minutes ago uh you talked about henry cho and i remember mm -hmm. henry telling us about some opportunities that he turned down you know, because he wanted to spend some time with his family and things like that. He had some decisions to make. And, you know, those are the kinds of things that not everybody gets to necessarily see or, or hear your story. And, and some of the stories, uh, especially some of the comedians that we've had on, are just so powerful and compelling. And, you know, and just they're just great people. And you're among them. And that's why we were oh, so you. excited about having you on here tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not one to go away for a month at a time. I just, I, I don't want to go out. I like, I like. It's my wife and I are empty nesters now, so we got rid of the kids, and it's, it's fantastic. And then I'm out there and Jabrook doing shows somewhere, and she's by herself with the dog. So it's, uh, I mean, she'll come when she comes. When I'm married to a first grade teacher, and that's a very demanding job. So unless it comes to the summer, uh, she's she's still doing lesson plans. So right, right. What do you have coming up in 2024? And are there any New Year's resolutions you can share with us? Well, I've got a bunch of shows coming up the first quarter, which is great. And and uh, you can catch me out anywhere. We can catch me on joeycallahan.com. That, that's going to have my schedule. And, and and send me a message if you'd like to come, whoever's watching this. Uh, as far as New Year resolution, you know, I, I don't because I only, I end up breaking them. So what I try to do is reverse psychology. Is I'm, I'm trying to get fatter than I am now. <laughs> and I want to eat and drink a lot of really bad food and alcohol. So I figured if you're going to break New Year's resolution, make the, the effort to do really bad ones. And then you'll, you'll maybe do the opposite and get in shape. I might have to steal that. Please. It's yours, my darling. Please. To steal it. That's great. So so basically, you won't be one of those 5,000 people that's going to be coming to Planet Fitness those first four weeks of January, taking up all the machines when I'm trying to get in my workout next month? Yeah, yeah when you when you, you won't see me at your Pilates class, I'll tell you that right now, <laughs> your jazzercise, I won't be doing that. <laughs> I ha We have, we rescued, uh, 2020, we lost our yellow lab, and I cried more than when my mother passed away. So my daughter talked me into getting this Labrador Mastiff. So the, she's half Labrador, half Mastiff. The front part is Labrador, and I clean up her in the backyard. The backyard definitely is Mastiff, trust <laughs> me. And if, if we, if I don't W, I have to whisper this, we don't W-A-L-K her every day. Um, she goes, she's, she's a big girl. 
we don't we don't body shame here, but she's a big girl. So that's most of my most of my exercise is uh, W A L K. People with dogs know you can't say that word. Right, right. <laughs> well, I'm sure that's very necessary, you know, for 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 the dog, but for you as well. This dog is a dog for a 25 year old man, not a 55 year old man. That's all. <laughs> that's all. I'm. My yellow lab was great. She would just like take a nap and wake up and go. I would not say no to a pizza. This one's got, this one's trying to sign me up for a 5K. And I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, oh, God. Keep you young, Joey. It'll keep you young. Oh, sure. Yes. Or kill me. You know, it's a six of one, half dozen of the other. It's... Well, Joey, gosh, it's been, it's been so much fun talking to you. And, you know, Bill and I will try and work it out that we can come and see you. I would love that. That person. would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are on the, you guys are on the Western part of the suburbs, right? Is that? Well, southwest of Philly, I am. Okay. Yeah. 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 I like you, know, yeah, it's, it's you can tell she's Italian. Bill, you can tell she's Italian. Say, well, where are you guys from? Italians don't like to answer any questions. That's why you never see an Italian movie critic. Like, hey, did you see the movie? I didn't see nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. I don't know you. Mind your business. We keep it close to the vest there, Joey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, that's like uh, uh, Mike Marino when he said when he if he ever became president, you know, mm -hmm. his whole uh, his 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 platform would be you don't see nothing, you don't say nothing, you don't know nothing. That's right. Keep your <laughs> talk when you're spoken to. <laughs> Funny. Well, Joey, thank you so much for coming on the show. We love your comedy. We uh, love seeing kind. you again, and we wish you a very happy new year. You guys as well. Thank you so much, and thanks for the support you do for comedy. We really appreciate it. Yeah, we'll we'll have you back. And folks, be great. thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next year. Got my older daughter, Emma Frances Callahan. She is a millennial. They're fun. <laughs> She's 23, but when she was born, she was born with colic. She cried all the time. People go, oh, that was tough. When did it stop? I said, she's 23, I'll keep you posted. <laughs> I was arguing with her and she was indignant. She goes, you're too aggressive. I go, Emma, let me explain something to you. My father was an Irish Catholic teamster. Do you want to see aggressive? <laughs> you have no idea what aggressive is. Growing up, my father would say things to me like, you know, you're not my real son. <laughs> my real son plays football for Notre Dame. I'm like, oh, what a coincidence. My real father could afford to send me there. <laughs> we laugh and we laugh and then he beat me unconscious. My dad would give me Alamo beatings. An Alamo beating was if I would just shut up, he'd stop beating me. But I was going out like the Alamo. <laughs> the odds were against me, my guns were a blaring. I don't know what I did one day. He chased me up down my room, I shut the door, I put my back against the door. He literally put his fist through the door and was reaching for me like a zombie movie. <laughs> my sister's in the other room going, Joey, just shut up. And of course I gotta go, who is he? This week's episode has been brought to you by Doherty & Company Insurance Services for all your business and personal insurance needs. Our friends at Tennis Addiction in Exton, PA. And the Mallon Agency, where exceeding expectations is how they do business.